<laughs> there is a story, a huge story breaking on the blaze today. Arab stone Christian protesters in Dearborn, Michigan. It is caught on camera, and it is something right out of the Middle East. Now, these Christians are not necessarily, you know, they're not actually singing Kumbaya, so they're not to be held, um, uh, I don't know, I, well, they're not to blame because nobody deserves to get rocks to the head. Um, I mean, did we not learn from every Charlie Brown uh, cartoon? Um, but they're not, you know, they're, they're kind of in your face Christians. So they're not, they're not going to make you proud that they're Christians. However, they are, you know, just in this family, you know, park in Dearborn, Michigan. And people begin to throw, stone them, throw rocks at them. It is horrifying. Children are engaged in this. We wanted to talk to uh, Dr. Uh, Zudi Jasser. He is, um, he's one of the really good guys. He is on the outs because he speaks out against the Muslim Brotherhood. He, he's a, um, a Muslim and he is the guy that everybody was saying, where are the good Muslims? This guy. And they marginalize him, isolate him as much as possible. He has uh, written a new book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, An American Muslim Patriot's Fight, uh, fight to Save His Faith. Um, Zudi, how are you, sir? Great, Glenn. It's uh, great to be with you. And, you know, uh, the platform that we generated in uh, putting together this story and the battle that I think is just uh, in the early stages, but we're, pre- we're playing a great role, uh, is in no small part due to all the help you've given in getting the message out of what we're trying to do against the Brotherhood. So thank you. Um, tell me about the um, the Muslim Brotherhood. The president seems to be completely um, oblivious, and I don't think it's even possible, oblivious to the Muslim Brotherhood and thinking that they're bad. He just invited a known terrorist to the White House and met with them. What was going on, uh, Zudi? Well, it's it's a White House that not only uh, at, at the best does not have a strategy against a, a a major threat that's emerging in the Middle East that has been brewing for generations uh, between a struggle of two fascisms, the secular fascism of the Mubaraks, the Ben Husseins and Assad, versus the theocratic fascism, and and uh, unfortunately, uh, without a strategy, you're going they're allowing the Islamists to take over in no different than they did in Iran. And uh, it's uh, almost like being present during the Bolshevik Revolution and not having a strategy uh, against communism and saying that, well, as long as they came to power democratically, we don't care. And uh, for anyone uh, in this administration to even think that an Islamist regime in Egypt is going to be friendly to America or to Israel is just uh, beyond naive and uh, setting us up for disaster globally. How does this end with an America that has lost her way? Well, this is why I think it's so important. I mean, what we're looking for is hope, and this is something you give so many people, and and I hope people can get from my book, is that, remember, the Brotherhood came to power because of our negligence, but they only got 25% of the vote in Egypt initially. They won a runoff election of the highest two, which were basically more of the old, uh, new new emerging thoughts and, and, and free thinkers, cannot establish themselves in six months after uh, a 50-year drought of any type of uh, free infrastructure. So we need leadership in the West. You know, if people read my book, I think they'll get hope that there are Muslims that want freedom, that want to fight back against the theocrats, that want a society based in God and and uh, American liberty and pluralism, but don't want Islamism and want and to take responsibility for reform. There were millions of women that were pushing back against the Islamists in Egypt that now are looking to America with disdain because we abandoned them in Egypt. We abandoned the Coptics and the minorities and the Muslims that didn't want the Brotherhood to win and, and lead. And, and they see America as basically always taking the lowest hanging fruit, the, the strong horse, if you will, and never taking the side of righteousness. And, and uh, this administration uh, has really brought American soft power to the, the lowest it's ever been in, in generations. So so tell me, how, how do we change this? Because our, our, I mean, we have care. You talk about in your book, care. Explain to the American people how dangerous care is. Well, I, when we talk about the Brotherhood, they have hundreds of different manifestations, not only in the Middle East, but globally. And part of them was uh, groups like the Council of American Islamic Relations that came to the West to 
uh, use Western freedoms in order to incubate a, a theopolitical evangelical movement to try to create enclaves of, of Islamist groups, just like you mentioned what's happening in Dearborn, where they, they have all these different fronts that uh, uh, um, use Western freedom, political correctness, or multiculturalism in order to spread Islamism and control Muslim societies here and make America and the West into isolationists or quote-unquote non-interventionists so that they can take over Muslim-majority countries and weaken America from within. And they've done that. They, they have soaked up the bandwidth of attention since 9-11 and even before to, uh, of Islam to calling everybody Islamophobes, bigots, uh, anti-Muslim. That's what they called me when I got appointed uh, a few months ago by Senator McConnell. And in the book, I talk about how you know, this is what they do. They target leaders of reform so that we can't get any traction, and they continue to maintain a monopoly because of their petrodollar funds and, and other foreign interests. And they don't want American freedom to spread because they want the Islamic state concept where Muslims are a majority, and then they want the non-Islamic states to weaken from within. How real is the caliphate? Well, there's, I would say there's a neo-caliphate, and it exists. It's called the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which is 57 uh, countries that have nothing in common other than that they're Muslim-majority countries. And if anybody tells me that's not a neo-caliphate, then why isn't there an organization of Christian countries or other countries that came together because of other faith majorities? And the OIC is a major threat. And now, as you see, Turkey and, and uh, uh, Iran uh, and the emerging uh, Islamists now in Egypt, these countries are going to put together their resources in order to spread what they call democracy, but it's actually mobocracy of the Islamist controlling societies. And and uh, they are going to be, a, I believe you're seeing a triangulation of the world between the free countries of the West, the Islamic countries that are forming a neo-caliphate, and then Russia and China uh, and the East. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah, Zudi, how do you get this information out with the with the media the way it is? The BBC, just for to give one new example, has now admitted that they their reporters have failed to explore both sides of the story of the Arab Spring, that their journalists got carried away with events and produced overexcited reports. Oh my gosh. I the mean, BBC did that? The BBC is Congratulations. To it. Congratulations, BBC. But, I mean, the media is so overwhelming in this way. How do you get the truth out there? I, I don't know what, even what the path to that is anymore. Well, the path, I think, is, uh, you know, people with vision, with an understanding of what the long game is, not just the short, oh, my gosh, okay, they've had a revolution, so Jeffersonian principles are a light switch that will be turned on, which is just absurd. It needs it needs uh, 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 investigation and and analysis into what the reality is on the ground in Egypt to, to try to help and adopt movements that exist. And I think if people read my book, they'll realize that at the end I have a letter to my kids, and I, and I talk about the fact that this is about legacy and the media and, and uh, a lot of the old uh, system here in the West that is so much just about uh, placating uh, their own interests and using whatever issues exist for the, the partisan politics of the election cycle uh, they don't really want to look at a long vision the way Ronald Reagan or others did in uh, defeating what are truly global threats. And, you know, I, I loved how in your site, Glenn, you talked about the people yesterday that got it right versus those that got it wrong. Yep. And there's so many people that have been pushing out in the media, and we have alternative ways of doing that. And, you know, I think my book, uh, Battle for the Soul of Islam, is a way to get that message out uh, in contrary to a lot of the media that are getting it wrong. I don't know if you uh, saw the dedication in, in Cowards. Did you see that? I did. I, I was just humbled by that. Uh, I can't let tell me, you enough thank you what that means to me and my family. Let me, uh, let me read uh, what I dedicated um, Cowards um, to Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and all those who emulate courage in some small way, like Alveda King, Ted Nugent, uh, General Jerry Boykin, and Zudi Jasser. Agree or disagree with any of them. These people will never say the things that they do not believe, no matter the cost. They are the opposite of cowards. Mm. Zudi, I, um, I am proud to be your friend. And uh, I, this is a great and important uh, work that you're engaged in, and a great and important book, uh, The Battle for the Soul of Islam, by uh, Dr. Zudi Jasser.